Faceplant is one of the best, if not the best, synthesizers out there. It has so much to offer that I divided this video in different sections covering the aspects of this synth. So let's stop wasting time and let's start facing our plants. Faceplant has a modular architecture which means you can arrange the generators, the effects and modulators any way you want. These come in form of blocks and each block can be arranged and rearranged by dragging and dropping. Initially the sound comes from top to bottom on the generators and from top to bottom and left to right on the effects. So firstly let's concentrate on the generators. These are called generators because they are not only oscillators. You have the analog generator which is the four basic shape waves. You also have the wavetable engine with a pretty nice collection of wavetables. You got the sampler with also a pretty nice collection of samples. And finally you got the noise generator. Each of these generators starts on their own group, as you can see here, and the group always start with the generator in question, followed by an envelope of the signal, and then to the output. That way you can have, for example, this softwood wave right here, with a different envelope of this noise right here, which is great to add different textures over time. But you can also mix different generators on the same group and they will share the same envelope. Now I mentioned that the sound goes from top to bottom, so if you put another generator below this, it won't make any sound. Because, as I said, the output is on the envelope and this is after the output. So you just have to drag and drop right here and you can even press on this dotted line and add different generators in between. You can change the envelope to a curve, which is similar to an envelope, but you can edit the shape and it doesn't have a sustain. Or you can loop it. You have two effects you can add after any oscillators, for example the distortion. It has different options and you also have a filter. You got looping mode for the sampler, wave table position and band limit, the pulse width for the square wave and also a syncing effect. And for the noise, you have different colors, different types, and stereo. Finally, each generator will have the same values right here, for example, the level the pitch on semitones and send. You can multiply the pitch on harmonics. You can shift it by hertz. And you can change the phase. Now the great thing is that each one of these parameters can be modulated by other oscillator. As you can see we have this green plus button right here. We press it and we can modulate each one of these parameters giving us different results. And of course if we modulate the phase with other oscillator it's going to give us FM modulation. Not only that the parameters of the filter and the distortion can be audio rate modulated too. So you get more experimental sounds. Finally, you can add global glide, always glide or only one legato, global unison, and well, also unison on the oscillators. Change the polyphony, the master pitch, and the bend range for the pitch wheel of your keyboard. <laughs> It's sounding pretty dry, so let's go to the next section, which is the effects. This video took a lot of time to make, so it'd be amazing if you subscribe to the channel and also give it a like. The effects are a ton. If you want to see a description of the majority of them, go check my Kilohertz Essential video right here. Other effects that are not free are, for example, the Crave and Slice EQ, which are pretty nice additions for advanced EQing, and you can offset them, change the gain, and even change the mix. You also have the Disperser, the Faturator, which is another flavor of distortion, and the Convolver, which is a convolution device with a lot of input responses, even some experimental ones like glitches, or some experimental spaces like, for example, a cookie jar. 
You also have the snap hip and the multipass, but I'm going to go back to them later on the video. As I said, the signal flow here is each lane top to bottom and then left to right. So first disperser, fatturator, and then convolver. You can change the routing right here and also on the oscillators, which helps you make something like a bass with a lot of stereo information, but with a stable sub frequency. Each effect lane also have a mix knob and on all seriousness, this is really powerful. You can change the gain and add as many effects as you want. Now things go crazier with snap hip and multipass. Snap hip is another effect rack that lets you use effects in series as it's on faceplant or also in parallel by choosing this button right here. With that, you can make complex change that are inserted on the effect chain you already have on Faceplant. With utilities like the channel mixer or the stereo, you can use a snap heap to apply mid-side or left-right effects to your sound, which is crazy for a synthesizer to do. Every macro that's on the preset is going to be shown here. You can use them without having to open up snap heap every time. On the other hand, multipass is another effect rack, but designed as a multiband processor. You can have up to five different bands that will split the sound and you also have pre and post effects with all of these other parameters like a mix knob, panning and so on. So as far as effects go, this has to be the most versatile synthesizer out there. Finally, let's go to modulators. Almost any parameter on the synthesizer can be modulated, and every modulator offers unique sources to add movement and craziness to your sound. You can modulate the effects, the oscillators, the macros, and even the modulators themselves. But let's go step by step. Modulation works like this. Let's make one of the most simple patches out there, which is a filter sweep. So you press here on modulators, add an envelope, you can shape it as you want, and then you just press this orange plus button and all the highlighted plus icons right here are the modulation destination. So of course we go to the cutoff point, we can choose the modulation by percentage and it also shows you the range of hertz that you're affecting and there you go. <laughs> You got your classic modulators like LFOs with different shapes, the already mentioned envelope and also a random source. And you can go crazy and basically make noise. With the LFO and the random you can go from Hertz to Sync, so you stay on time with your DAW. And you can go unipolar, bipolar and negative. You can even trigger these modulators by other modulators, for example we can freeze this random and change the value each time the LFO is on the top. We just press this plus right here, press this equal icon right here, and with the right click we can change a threshold on when this is triggered. And finally, you can change the amount of modulation with this little slider right here. Other modulators are the audio follower and the pitch tracker, which are going to, well, change depending on the pitch or the audio. But you can also put something like a sample and let's make this go to the sideband. So now, if we choose sideband right here, we are not going to hear the sample, but it's going to affect both of these modulators. You also have MIDI modulators, you have the note, pressure, velocity, pitch wheel, note gate, MIDI CC, MP, timbre, and then you got different utilities. For example, the remap. This is going to change the curve of any modulator. This needs a whole video explaining it, and I believe Dash Glitch has a really nice tutorial on it. But basically, a macro is always going to be linear. For example, if I want to add a macro to the cutoff point. <laughs> But if we map the macro initially to the remap and then the remap to the cutoff point and then change the curve of this remap, take a look at the macro and the remap and how it affects the cutoff point.
With Remap you can make random gates, random triggers, and you can also transform a random modulator into pitch information by applying this to the Remap and then choosing <coughs> and then choosing an scale preset. For example, let's go to minor and then we modulate the pitch of the oscillator with this. <laughs> Lower and upper limit will, well, add a limit to any modulation, for example, the same random, we have a lower limit and an upper limit. The scale is going to multiply or divide values depending on what you have. The slew limiter is going to make anything that's steep, well, not steep. You can see that this is sort of like a staircase. If we modulate the slew limiter, it's going to be more and more like a curve. We have the sample and hold. With this, for example, we can add a curve and act like a trigger right here, and we can put that this random random right here is the signal that it's going to be sampled. So each time this curve is triggered, it's going to sample a different value. Speaking of the curve, this one is also nice, is initially like an envelope where you can put any shape you want, but not only that, you can transform it into an LFO by putting this infinite, it's on seconds, and you can sync it to different time signatures. <laughs> And finally, we have the LFO table, which is an LFO, but with an wavetable manner, so you can get crazy and different kinds of results and shapes for your modulation needs. Different gates, different transforming envelopes, and so on. <laughs> Finally, you got 8 macros and the mod wheel to map different effects and make it easier to sound morphing on a patch. For example, I can affect the cutoff point, the feedback of the delay, the position of the beat crusher, the mix on the reverb, also maybe the decay, and this other ladder filter right here. And why not the drive on this ladder filter too. This synth has a lot to offer, but that doesn't mean that, even with all the pros, there could be some cons. So, the first con can be that the workflow is slower than any other synth that has, for instance, a built-in dedicated envelope for the filter, or that every envelope a modulator is visible from the beginning. And this also goes for more complex scenarios, for example, you could say that this doesn't have a granular engine, but you actually have one, only that you have to build it yourself. It even has some tutorials on how to make them. So this can be considered a con because other synthesizers like pigments already have a pretty nice granular engine that you just have to press on to start playing with it. Still, that doesn't bother me at all, it might not have the fastest workflow and you have to build some stuff from scratch, but in reality it's all the options that you have that makes this my favorite synthesizer today. I know that opinions are subjective, so tell me in the comments what do you think about Faceplant and which one is your favorite complex synthesizer. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and give it a like. Not only that, consider supporting my content by becoming a patron. This video took a long time to make, so I will really appreciate that. I will see you next time, bye bye.